so pine MRI is not going to be enough to diagnose craniocervical instability or for us to really get uh, much information in most circumstances. Amanda, I don't have access to upright MRI, but I do have a supine cervical MRI. From that, it looks like I might have a low CXA. Is there a correlation between low CXA and a retroflex stens? I'm assuming if I did have flexion-based imaging, that CXA measurement would be even smaller. Um, so to kind of break that down, we can take a CXA measurement off a routine supine live face up in a tube MRI, number one. Number two, is uh, if you have a retroflex dens or a dens that tends to go backwards towards the spinal cord, that's going to reduce the CXA. Um, and then all of that needs to be looked at in context during a telemedicine. Now, during a telemedicine, with me at least, I'm going to require that you have movement-based imaging because a supine MRI is not enough. Uh, in order for us to make that time that we spend together useful. So uh, a digital motion x-ray would be one thing to consider. Uh, you can use various x-ray types, uh, just like the video I pointed to, to try to see if you can get something similar to a DMX uh, or an upright MRI with flexion and extension. Uh, so pine MRI is not going to be enough to diagnose craniocervical instability or for us to really get much information in most circumstances.